Well, um, and it's paramount that the programs that we are implementing are replicable and scalable so that we can reach out to as many children as possible. Um, right now, we do K through 12 education. So we reach out to children who are between 3 to 14 years of age in disadvantaged communities. And right now, 60% of the children that we reach out to are actually female. So that's excellent. Like we need to keep that up. In order to be a great organization that's doing great innovative work and reaching out to as many children as possible, we need to be unique. And how do we do that? So in any given state in India, you'll see corporations going out there and taking the lead in an innovative program. Then you'll see the government coming in and providing their space, their teachers, so that we can train them. And then when we go out to slums, we also reach out to <coughs> citizens and volunteers. So you'll see um, men and women, a lot of times in the slums, it's women who volunteer to be trained in, to teach their children through the Pratham model. We give them books, we give them materials, we give them all the skills and um, tools they need to teach their children. And then they go out and try to make their communities a little better by teaching their children. Um, so that tri that tripart partnership between corporations, governments, and citizens is something that makes us quite unique from other organizations. We don't want to replicate what the government is doing. We just want to help them do it better. And once again, we're low-cost and scalable models so that we can reach out to as many people as possible. We have thousands of volunteers around the country who help us do what we do. And all the programs are measured for impacted results. So every single program we have out there is evaluated. We collect data for everything that we do. And this data helps us shape the implementation as we go forward. So it's not a group of people saying, we really want to help people. We just want to teach. It's a bunch of people with a bunch of data that makes us even more effective, which is something that I uh, was really impressed with when I was um, there's three major areas that Pratham focuses on. It's a huge organization, but the three areas I'm going to tell you about is the direct programs, which are focused in the slums, um, delivered by the Pratham volunteers that I just told you about. And we have a number of programs, and I'll expand on, on that later. Then we have policy shaping as well through our research branch, which is USER. Um, the, the, the branch that I volunteered with and worked with, um, and I'll tell you more about that for sure. And then there's another program that's receiving a lot of attention worldwide right now, and it's called Read India. It's catalytic programs that are nationwide campaigns, which they're now replicating in other countries as well because of its proven success. And on the side, um, while we're doing these programs, we come up with other social issues that we feel like we need to also create programs for. So some of them are the Pratham Council for Vulnerable Children, children who are out there who cannot go to school because they have to work. And so we try to create programs to cater um, their lifestyle and help them get back to school. English learning program, like Mark was saying, there are uh, lots of families in India who feel their children need to learn English. And so we started a program to try to teach English to children. Computer-aided learning, as well as Marcus said, um, a lot of families want their children to learn how to use a computer. So we started doing that as well. Um, Pratham Books is something that we started because we realized that there were no books that were created in Hindi or um, Marathi or all the other languages that we have in India. And so we started Pratham Books, which is basically um, an organization on the side of Pratham that creates books in different Indian languages um, so that we can start distributing it to our teachers, to our children, um, and also it's good for India that there's books out there for children in various different languages. And then early childhood and education centers as well. All the programs that we have are innovative and require enterprise. Um, they're key, they're pivotal to the Pratham movement, and once again, they're all backed up by data, which is something that's really important to the organization. I'm going to give you a little bit
bit of a history. Um, so in 1995, we had a small group of people come together and say, we need to do something. Uh, the education that our children are receiving in India is not that great. Back in 1995, there wasn't a law that said start a school. Madhu Chauvan, the uh, person who started Pandam, was like, this is not a limitation. We need to start working with the community to create schools that the communities can use. So we can have them on roofs. We can have them under a tree. We can have them in a hallway. We need to have them wherever children have access to. When I was in India, I had a chance to go and observe a couple of these classes. And the class that I went to was literally on a roof. Um, on top of a chanty, and it was led by uh, a female who lived in the community, in the slum, and she couldn't go out of the community to work. Her family wouldn't let her. And so Pratham came in and she said, you know, I still want to do something for this community. So Pratham came in and trained her on how to provide very basic education to children. She, and then they gave her books from Pratham Books, they gave her tools, they gave her various different things that she can use to help children learn. And she just started teaching these children preschool, after school, anything to supplement their government education or their private school education. Kira, what was the name of the person you mentioned? Madhav Chauvan. Madhav Chauvan. Mm -hmm. If you go to our website, all the information is um, but this wasn't enough. So they, they started working, it wasn't enough. In 1997, they started introducing remedial education. So not only preschool, but for children who are in <coughs> school already, but still they're lagging behind. Maybe we should do homework tutoring on the side. They started that. And then they realized that children still weren't learning as much. So they created this accelerated learning technique, which I don't know very much about, because there's a lot about it on the website. It was basically a scientific model to help children learn as fast as possible. So within four to eight weeks, children can learn how to read basic standard two texts um, through a very innovative model. And then in 2005, they came and said, um, we need to have data. There's, there's not enough data. There's no one holding schools accountable, and I'm going to tell you more about that soon. 2007, Read India was started. 2009, District Resources Center started to help empowering communities for education. And now we've basically become um, a pan-India campaign. We have reached 43 cities, 308,000 out of the 600 villages in the country. We're everywhere. Um, and the, we, we try, because our programs are low uh, price and very scalable, uh, very replicable, we can go and put our program in various different cities and villages across the country and has proven to be quite successful. See, Karnataka and Kerala are pretty much not approached here? No, they have been approached. Um, that map was slightly shaded, but we have programs in Karnataka and Kerala. They actually have very high education um, yeah. rates. But on, on 